Thanks, Curtis. So you've probably figured out the topic today is needlessness. And you might wonder, well, who cares? Who's needless? I'm not. I got needs. I need my needs met. And of course, that's the cultural story we've been handed. Do you realize how much the culture has domesticated us into believing that we actually need certain things? And that's a story. It is nothing but a story. It's not even remotely connected to who we really are. If you get the concept of oneness, there cannot be needs if we are spirit and we are having a human experience. The human part of us may have certain needs, but the spirit has no needs. And what we lose track of is our spirit. Glorious meditation. If you believe you're a body, you know all about needs. If you know that you're a spirit and you simply have a body, you're not worried about needs. What would you need? Of course, in miracles says, you need do nothing. And yet the world has told us, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And you have to do it in the right order. And some religions are based on the notion that you have to pray the right words. You, see, you even have to face the right direction in order to be in tune. <laughs> but what is that? except a story. A story about divisions, separations, and anything but oneness. Because if we are spirit, and I'm certain that we are, we don't have to do anything. We can choose to do a whole bunch of things. But let us be guided by spirit in that choice. One of the things that we've been talking about in the last few weeks and will continue is spirituality and its impact on how the world operates. What's going on in the world today is anything but oneness. It's nothing but separation and judgment. We see the other as different and even, heaven forbid, wrong. We judge people as wrong because they are different. And what's wrong with that operational standpoint is that it doesn't work very well. You don't have to look too far in the evening news to see evidence of neediness. Everyone has needs, and they perceive those needs as really, really important. We've been told that even God, infinite, unconditional love, has needs. God needs us to follow the rules. God needs us to behave in a certain way. And if we don't, well, you know what you're going to get. 40 lashes with a wet noodle, or worse. And that is part of this acculturation that we've been blessed with. 
we have been taught that God needs us to do certain things. Sometimes even in the right order. And there are stories all around about people who have been excommunicated, defrocked, and all of those kinds of <coughs> judgments because they chose non-judgment. They chose to participate in oneness. They chose to join with others. And there are some places where you don't dare join with them because why? Because it's against the rules. And the rules have simply been made up. There are no rules. And anyone who says that there are rules is making up a story in order to get you to conform with what they think. And that simply is dysfunctional. And what life is about is functionality. We want life to work. We want there to be peace and joy and prosperity in all of the world. How can there be peace and joy and prosperity when all of these needs are floating around? All of these unmet needs. So everyone is scuffling, trying their darndest to get their needs met or what their perception of the needs are. And we have no conceivable way to meet all of those needs. So what's called for is a new spirituality, a new notion about what's so, a new notion literally about God. We have to understand that God literally has no needs. That God is all that is. <clears throat> if God is all that is, what could possibly be needed? It is already everything that is. There can't be anything missing from all that is. Can there? What's missing from all that is? Well, there's nothing missing. So there are no needs. And this invention that we have created has created the classic dysfunctional family. We perceive that God has needs and that we need God. You don't need God. You are God. It's recorded in Scripture. Have I not said that ye are gods? And that is the truth. You are God expressing as you. You are God godding. <laughs> That's what you're doing. All that is, is simply functioning. And the essence of life and understand that life and God and love are synonyms. They're synonymous. They're the same thing. So whenever you use the term God, you can substitute life. You can substitute love. And the same essence is so. So the essence of life is it needs to be functional. Life is always functional, adaptable, and sustainable. Those are the three elements that life is. And if we are tottering on the brink of non-functionality, and we seem to be doing that, if we don't change how we're doing it, if we don't begin to function in a better way, 
or coherent fashion. There will be a great adaptation. <coughs> and it might be an adaptation that we actually don't like very much. Because life adapts. Life takes care of itself. That is the very essence of life itself. So it's up to us to create a spirituality, a concept of God that actually functions, that actually works. Because to the extent that we have an existing notion about God, we can see whether it's working. Is there peace and joy and goodwill among nations? I don't think so. And why is that? Because we've been inculcated with this story about needs. And we have to have our needs met. And if we can't get them met one way, we'll get them met another way. And one of the needs that seems to be extant in the world is that God needs us to do certain things, to believe certain things, to accept certain propositions. And that simply is not the case. It is not the case. Because spirit is all that is. And all that is, is missing nothing. So what's important is for us to come to understand that God has no needs, and neither do we. There's a story about a young woman who was at a swimming pool one day, reading a book, not swimming. In fact, she didn't know how to swim. But she saw a toddler fall in the pool. And she dropped her book and ran and jumped in the pool and held the toddler up till somebody else grabbed the toddler, saved its life. And then the woman began thrashing around and she had to have the help getting out of the pool. And someone said to her, how could you possibly jump in the pool when you can't swim yourself? And she said, didn't think about that. I needed to do what I needed to do. And I just jumped in to do what I could. That woman didn't even need to continue her own life. She saw what was important was to do what she did without regard to whether or not that body continued to function on the planet. And that's the essence of what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter whether or not you continue to function in the way you've been functioning. What matters, what's totally true, is that you, in each moment, make a choice about who you are about who you decide to be. Are you going to be the presence of divinity? Are you going to extend unconditional love in all situations? Or are you going to hang on to the cultural story and judge somebody for the clothes they wear? Or for the way they wear their hair? Or you might even have an opinion about people that don't have hair. And you might say, bald guys are no good. <laughs> How could you do that? Well, you? That's just an example of silliness. And what I'm saying is, judgment is inappropriate. Because we are spirit having a human experience. So we really need a new theology. We need a theology that suggests that God and life and love are the same thing. And that God and life and love have no needs. 
And when we begin to function in a way that is sustainable, in a way that brings peace, joy, and goodwill toward men into presence, into existence, then we will have accomplished our mission. We can't simply continue along the way we have. And we will not. We will not succeed by making others wrong. We cannot pick up a stick and go to other places of worship and beat down the door and say, you guys are all wrong. Don't you get it? You can imagine how unfunctional that would be. <laughs> so what we're really talking about is being in a way that changes the energy in the world. Because that is the way the world will change. There has to be an attractor field of higher energy. So it's up to us to energize this grander version of humanity that sees humanity as simply an expression of divinity, simply acting in ways that are supportive of life or not so much. But we're not going to beat people up for not being in tune. We're simply going to be the tuning fork. We are going to emanate a different vibration into the world. And that in itself will take care of all of the problems. We will walk this earth without any sense of judging. We will walk this earth without any sense of needing anything. You can choose and you can do, but don't do it out of a perceived need. Do it because it is the statement that you are making about who you are choosing to be. You know, it's been reported in many of the world's religions that there is a judgment day. And that you will be finally judged. And everybody's worried about being judged sufficient. And I say to you, yes, there is a final judgment. And it occurs every moment. Every moment. And that judgment comes from what it is that you choose to think, say, or do. Because whatever it is that you think, say, or do, that is in that moment, a final judgment that you have about yourself. So whatever it is that you do, it is consistent with your judgment about yourself. So I invite you to tune in to a higher level of appreciation for who you are and who you can become. You can become an even grander version of yourself. And that is what this new spirituality, we call it interspiritual sometimes. That's what it's about. Be better than you've been before. Be closer to a vibrational connection with the divine. Because that's what you are. And when you don't do that, you're just announcing what your opinion of yourself really is. Every action, every thought you think, every word you speak, everything you do is simply a judgment that you have about who you are. So I invite you to expand your definition of yourself. Take on the notion that you are the 
chosen one. Because you are. You are God. Godding. Be that. Do that. <coughs> and everything changes. So it's your choice. And it's open mic time.